So, the 5600 XP, we know everything. We know all of the specs and rumors and leaks and, and, and we know it's all confirmed, right? We I basically, I told you what it was going to be. It was going to be like back in the old days when they used to have a, a 5870 a 5850 and then a 5830 basically is what it's going to be it's going to have the same shader count as the 5870 uh 5870 57 5700 it's going to have the same uh, shaders as the 5700 it's going to have a crippled memory bus which we knew about and it's going to absolutely rock the socks off a 1660 ti so 1660 ti 1660 ti money and it's a little bit faster. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I would have liked it to be 250 quid. I think at 250 quid, it gives everybody what they want. And I think that, therefore, it it, it, it opens the door to everyone saying, wow, AMD, you finally brought value because it's smashing the 1660 Ti. It's smashing the 1660 Super. It's more like 1660 Super money than it is a 1660 Ti money. And everybody goes home happy. I think anything under 300, when I heard that rumor of 300, and I was more or less told it was going to be 300, and I think AMD genuinely themselves were knocking around the the, the the 300 dollar price point if you ask me why I do those videos I do those videos so that because they've got PR guys who in Europe who relate to me who talk to me they've got PR guys who talk to everyone and what their job is is basically to figure out right marketing guys figure out what price is okay so they do scroll through uh you know comment sections on youtube they do listen to what we're saying and they do kind of get a, a a taste for how much they can get away with charging for these cards so when you when you when you look at my videos before launch when i see pricing and i give out about it i give out about a hoping to get through to amd to try and tell them that two three hundred is not good two seven nine it's okay um, I would have preferred to see a 250. I think a 250, that absolutely dominates the market, destroys it. But I'm just going to take you over to um, to Tech Power Up. I just want to show you something, right? So over here at Tech Power Up, you can see the RX 480, RX 580, right, roughly. But I always say that that's not really a generational upgrade. So if you go to the 480 and you take the 480, and then you go, right, well, this is going to replace the 480, right? What did we usually get generation over generation? In fairness, we generation over generation used to be every two years, but AMD refreshed to, to get in between there. So that's fine. So RX 480, what's, what, what, where will we put this in a stack? So if we look at 1660 Ti, 16. 60 is 40 percent which is about a very good generational increase uh gpu manufacturers have tried to push 30 percent down your throat forever and nvidia are trying to push 25 percent down your throat now uh but if you I, I think it'll probably come in somewhere around here so vega 56 right i think it'll probably be there vega 56 because we've seen performance numbers we've seen that it is in fact faster than 1660 ti and pretty much everything it will be faster than 1660 ti as a graphics card it just has to be so um, at 1660 Ti money, it has to be faster in order to ship units. Um, I think AMD are playing the smart one here because this is the card that they need to beat. This is one of the well best-selling cards in the world. This is going to sell millions and millions of units. AMD need to compete with this. And But the, the, the unfortunate fact about it is it's just late again. And, and that's... That's a big draw, a big mark against its name, you know. If you're looking at a card, its performance is there. It's... Um, it's price point is okay it's not bad it's not 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 good either it's it's in between it's okay grand uh, it's the same price as its competitor but also a lot leading giving you in the, that price points uh leading performance now if we talk about how much we used to spend in this price category the, the eight gigabyte rx 480 was 239 but if you ask me amd didn't really want to sell that card for 239 dollars they just knew they had to so um you know if you look at what i think you should have got for this price there you go and you know, people can argue and fight with me all they want and they can say whatever they want but that's what you should have got right that's that's the level of performance you should have got it's four years later they've had two generational cycles and um, this card is 50 percent about it's going to be in between 40 percent 45 percent faster than rx 480 which is a decent generational upgrade but when you take into the scale of how long it took to get there it starts to look not great but at the same time this is a card that you can handily go out now and you can play 1440p games at 60 60 frames per second and you can play 1080p games at high refresh rate which is what people wanted let's be honest right what i wanted what i wanted was a card that would make uh 1440p the new 1080p and move on forward and when you were looking at that stack it kind of there was a big omission like there was a moment where the lady who was very nervous on stage we gotta go easy on her she did a good job she conveyed the information really well but 
she stood on stage and she said, for 1080p gaming, you have the RX uh, 5500 XT. Yes, I've been using the 5500 XT for about a month now. I've tried, I'm going to do a video on it, but I'm, I'm going to do it from the perspective of not taking this out of my, not putting this back into my PC. So I'm going to do it from the perspective of somebody who uses it every day. So I've been using the 5500 uh, XT and I genuinely, and I'm using a 1440p monitor, uh, so I'm giving it a hard time. And genuinely, I have not noticed any frame rate issues uh, with the games that I play. I don't really play much games, but I have done some testing. I haven't really noticed any games. Like, you can play a lot of titles at 48, 50 frames per second, you know. And the games that I would like to play at really high detail are usually the, the ones that are really cinematic anyway. So you don't really notice that stutter. It's not like fast Twitch games. I was playing a bit of Halo. Like, like the 5500 XT destroys Halo. Absolutely destroys it. Like, Halo Reach, the new uh, Master Chief collection. It, it, it is a decent graphics card so yeah she sat there and then she said in her stock we've got the 5500 xt for 1080p gamers and i would argue that that card yes while i think it should be significantly cheaper very much like the bare minimum that card like the, what amd have done with the 5600 xt is do what they should have done with the 5500 xt so for me the 5500 xt 8 gigabytes should have been 180 uh, and the the the, the four gigabyte should have been one fifty, right? Um, and uh, well, for me, um, I think AMD had learned from that mistake and now have priced this chip this chip accordingly. Um, for me, a fifty five hundred XT at one eighty still is too expensive for me. But I think that they were probably bashing around those two price figures and they aired on the on the side of going to to a, a higher price. Um. But when you go to a higher price, you're then compared to the higher price products on the market. And you're actually competing with yourself when you look at it. Because, you know, at $170 for a 4 gigabyte model, you can then look at a, an RX 5, 590, which beats both stacks and has 8 gigabytes of RAM and a higher memory bus. So it's going to be better as you move up resolutions. Um, so it, it just makes you want to buy a 590, to be honest. <laughs> like, cause, yes, yes, it's, it's a little bit more power draw, but like at this at this level of, of of gaming performance the power draw is like 200 watts you're not going to really care about it. it's not it's an extra light bulb in your house it's it's just not crazy 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 high power draw when you're talking about 500 watts like when you're when you're talking about your system draw going from 300 watts to maybe 700 watts because you've got a vega in it then you need to like you know think about maybe think about power but other than that um the, so with the 5500 xt i think amd fucked up and all it would have took was a twenty 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 dollar uh, pricing price decrease or a ten dollar deduction in the price and every a ten percent sorry deduction in the price and everybody would have been like well you know what it's it's decent it's about the same price as uh, a sixteen fifty but what it does sixteen fifty super what it does offer you is a, a higher amount of VRAM so there would have been a kind of an argument there and um, if you ask me where it, i think it should have been priced to sell really well i think it should the 8 gigabyte variant should have been 150 and i think the 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 4 gigabyte variant should have been 120 and if you want to ask me where they would have previously priced it if the old amd had been in charge with Roger Dory, in other words i think it would have been 120 dollar card with a hundred dollar four gigabyte model genuinely that's what i think I, I think maybe they can't sell it for that price genuinely but yeah if you if you look at the the 57 the 5700 uh, the 5600 xt it is a price saving exercise in every way shape and form the memory is cheaper and there's less of it not only that the memory bus is 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 quartered so that that allows you some flexibility on on, on broken transistors there maybe they're getting a lot of 5700s back but some of them have of, of you know uh, errors on the on the transistors and not only that the when you when you when you cut down a die to that point it means that all of them are good so you you, you can just go a lot more of them are good so even if you're cutting down higher end skews to make uh, a 56 or 5700 xt you're still saving on the memory and you're still saving on the fact that you, where you were getting 90 good dies per wafer now you're getting 120 good dies per wafer which which is not going to affect all the prices so it's a price saving exercise as i said before uh, so you look at the 5600 xt yes 100 279 dollars for that kind of level of performance is fine absolutely fine a level of performance um two years ago would have cost us uh 400 quid so okay grant grant 
we've got two years later, we've got a card that costs 130 quid less, gives you the same level of performance, and is a lot more power efficient. And it will be very power efficient. I think that you're going to see this one, um, uh, you know, kind of bring it to NVIDIA on the power level performance. Because some one of the ways they've gimped it is they've dropped the clock speed a lot on this. So unless there are, these are really bad reject dies and they have to ramp the voltage, you're going to see this really, 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 really powerful. So that's good. 5500 XT, as I said. So when AMD, when the lady stood out on stage, all nervous, she said, we've got a 5500 XT, everyone. There's a 5500 XT for 1080p gamers. For uh, for the ultimate 1080p experience, we've got the 5600 XT. And for the 1440p guys, we've got the 5700. And for the ultimate, we've got the 5700 XT. But there was a glaring, glaring, glaring omission. And the whole time, I knew I knew that they weren't going to announce Big Navi or any bigger cards. Right? I knew they weren't going to do that. And I said that in my video before CES. But I did, like, there was a moment there where you were like, this is so obvious that she's going to say for all you 4K gamers out there. But she didn't. And, and and that's the glaring omission and it's it's a serious problem where i think amd have decided that we're not going to compete until we're ready um we're not going to do anything that we're, we're not going to force our hand we're not going to and for me i just think that as i said before if you are waiting for a big navi or a big graph you are not going to see one till minimum minimum third quarter this year minimum and I think I think AMD are very silly if they do not think that Nvidia have something coming. So if the the big Navi is going to compete with the new Nvidia stuff that's going to come out, it needs to be even more powerful. Unless they know something that we don't, and maybe Nvidia are not planning to launch anything till next year again. Well, then that's fine I, I think amd need a good run of being the fastest and i think they can be the fastest with those leaks of doubling this i don't think they're true but i think even something with 64 compute units would bring it to the 2080 ti not beat it but maybe bring it up very close to it maybe beat it in some games and also allow it to be more cost effective um uh, you know and bring more more performance so if you're keeping like so if you're keeping um i suppose uh, 1900 megahertz. Let's get calculator. Calculator. Calc. Right. If you keep it 1900 megahertz, let's say that's where most uh, 5700 XTs kind of, kind of, you can clock almost every one of them too. So if you're talking about 64 compute units times 64 equals uh, 4096 times 2 uh, times uh, 1900 megahertz. And you're, you're talking about something that will have 15.5, 15. 15 0.5 teflops of uh, compute performance which if you look at the way this thing's teflop performance of 10 teflops compared to the 2070 super which has about nine teflops and um, you know you only need to be one teflop higher on this to be the, the to, to come close to the performance of of the competitor so this being two or two and a half or so teflops uh, lower or higher than a than a, a, a 2080 Ti would mean that its performance would be considerably greater and increasing the memory bus might even give you a little bit more so when you're looking at that card that card could genuinely come close to uh, a 2080 Ti uh, as I said before like that's that's about adding another 40 or 50 percent to the to the card in terms of shaders while uh, you know you're hoping for about uh, 25 to 30 percent more performance i think that's possible um you know so <coughs> i i really think this these rumors excuse me i have a really bad cold um but uh yeah the for me i think that was the glaring emission stage that's the glaring emission in amd's lineup that's been glaring emission for a long time the other one was uh the 200 to 300 dollar price point that's been addressed now but now the big one is you're letting a nvidia have reign of the top end of the dispute and you've just decided very much like intel seemed to have this year we're not going to compete in desktop at all and um, we're forgetting about it and it's just done and that to me is a problem that to me is a problem i think i would like to see addressed yet i think that um AMD's CPU mind share will transpose itself over to the GPU mind share and therefore force uh, like help them sell more GPUs. But I think that the true breaking of the mind share is when you release a card that's faster than the 2080 Ti and you keep that spot for a year. So everybody's talking about it. Jay's doing his builds with the 5700, uh, with the whatever, the 5900 XT and his computers. Uh, Jay's upgrading his personal rig. Linus is upgrading his personal rig. All the big guys are upgrading their personal rigs. That will actually have a, a 
a, a tangible effect on the gaming market because yeah people might not be able to fight, buy, buy the big one but it will make them pay attention to the small guys and see what they have to offer whereas now they're just looking at the big guys running the biggest nvidia cards at 2080 ti's and they're thinking maybe I, I should just buy a lower SKU NVIDIA card, ergo. If you look at the install base that they were talking about, I think they said 6 million or 5.5 million installs of the new driver. I think I read somewhere that NVIDIA had 50 million installs of their new latest driver. 50 million. Now, I, 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 I'm i not confirming that. That was just in the back of my head somewhere when they said that. I said, I remember seeing NVIDIA give a quote in a recent one, Jensen was trotting up and down stage and he was talking about 50 million so when you look at how big the the and when you take into fact that 5 million of those installs and that's not the whole radeon base because a lot of people out there don't update their drivers and all that kind of stuff but um, if you look at the the adrenaline 2020 that was a big update brought a lot of stuff for people to come to want so i think that would have been one of their bigger ones that they would have installed <laughs> excuse me um so I think that by that by being one of their bigger bigger ones, you get a good sense of, of a lot. So there's five or six million people out there using Nvidia AMD GPUs, and but that includes APUs. And I have an I have an Nvidia I have an AMD Nvidia AMD APU out there on my laptop, so I would be in that number. Um, and the driver you can install your driver. You don't have to go to the OEM website anymore with the APUs, which is kind of cool. So when you look at that, um, you know you kind of it kind of paints a picture of how big nvidia's lead is on amd and i'm not saying that they're outselling them 10 to 1 in every way shape and form um but i'm saying that they're all selling them 10 to 1 in every way shape and form uh if you tend to look at steam hardware survey which i know is not good representative but it is when you look at the high-end stuff and the 2070 super is outselling by about five to one the 5700 xt and this is the best card in amd have launched in years and i mean years the RX 480 was not as good as this. The only thing that makes this look worse than the 480 is its price. This has been 300 quid. This would have been the best card AMD have launched, I think, since the 4870. Genuinely. That's how good this card is. Um, so, uh, you know, when you look at all that in, in, in retrospect and you look at where AMD are now, uh, I think to change the, the people's mind share to sell more graphics cards, they need to sell a, a high-end graphics card. And I think that you're not going to see one till at least third quarter of next year, which is disappointing. But you're seeing a, a nice card that's going to go into laptops. And you're going to see the 5700s going into laptops and the 5600s going into laptops, 5600M. And they're going to bring like 2060 level performance to, to gaming laptops. They're probably going to do it a little bit cheaper than 2060. And that's going to drive even more mind share towards AMD, which is only a good thing in the, in, in, in the scheme of things. And NVIDIA know which side they're better is butter on and they're really trying to ramp and push laptops the you seen that fucking bullshit with jensen and you know greater than the next generation consoles when he hasn't even got a clue what's in the next generation consoles he hasn't got a clue how fast they're going to be he doesn't know anything and he's comparing a 2080 max q which is more like a 2070 to uh to this stuff he's just talking out of his hole i think he just wants to trap him down and, and act like a dickhead all his life and that's fine if he wants to do that he's the kind of guy who asks for rounds of applause uh very much like the intel ceo do you see that this is the part where you you around give a pause or like fuck off you don't tell me what to do arsehole but yeah like so that that's that's kind of where uh you know jensen sits he's pushing the laptop stuff and he's trying to tell you that a 20 grand uh, sorry two grand laptop is better than a games console in terms of performance go fuck yourself jensen i think that i will take my 500 quid uh let a ga a 500 quid gaming box over your laptop that costs three times as much or twice four times as much and may or may not be more powerful uh, i think if, if amd's number of 12 ter sorry if xbox number of 12 teraflops is right this card will be the 2080 m uh, you know whatever max q absolutely fucking lutely will it be the 2080 non max q i don't know but it will be the 2080 max q go fuck yourself jensen go fuck yourself but anyway this is not a video about jensen um other than that yeah 5600 XT, very decent card. Um, hands NVIDIA, it's arse on the 1660 Ti. Probably will force them to drop the prices a little bit. So I, I think the 1660 Ti, if it was a $200 card, I'd be delighted with it. I think the price of that is that now i'm a bit disgusted with it to be honest. And I'm very much so with the because the, because the 2080, because the 50 5600 XT is faster, um, and NVIDIA have already priced that performance at. 280 quid if amd can bring more 
for the same price well then it's a good value um, because NVIDIA, that's how much NVIDIA have decided that, that price performance is worth. And that's why I always say with AMD, when they price their graphics cards wrong, it's because you weren't first. So therefore, you don't get to say how much that performance co com comes at. Because NVIDIA are the first there. Anyway, like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. But if you disliked it, tell me why you disliked it. Can't fix it if I don't know I did wrong. And in the comments, let me know if you're going to buy a 5600 XT. Are you excited for the 5600 XT? Were you happy that you've seen that $20 price decrease? Because I, I gen frankly, if these have been 300 quid, they were dead on arrival. Genuinely. Uh, now, with, with, with the two, with the 280, they're kind of more like this. Like where, you know, this 450 was DOA. This 450 was stupid. This 450 shouldn't have existed. This 450, I don't even know why they bought their arse. And then they dropped it to 400 and that hundred like 50 quid what a difference 50 quid can make because then that made this uh, you know 20 percent cheaper card for only five to eight percent less performance which is a good thing in my books and same with the 5700 when the 5700 got that 20 quid off what a difference 20 quid makes it made it more compelling um you know being the same price as an rtx 2060 having a full eight gigabytes of ram and being faster as well made the 2060 look stupid and by making an nvidia card look stupid even though your card is overpriced it makes it makes nvidia look stupid and that's just great anyway don't forget to do all of the like and commenting sharing subscribing sharing is the way to help me at the most if you share my videos that tends to lead to more views thank you very much for that and um, also um i have a patreon or paypal if you want to help the channel out directly help me buy hardware for the channel i will try and get a 5600 xt but if, if funds are strapped i might not be able to get one also if you want to help me out and you don't you want to get something back in return i do have a merch teesprings underneath so you can underneath this video so you'll see all that uh yeah don't forget to do all that stuff and let me know if you're going to buy one i'll talk to you next one uh, i'm going to press this button to stop recording bye 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 bye